I want to talk about power functions. I specifically want to talk about power functions where the exponent is a positive integer, and we could divide these into two cases. First, the odd power functions, which are y equals x to the n, where n is an odd number, 1, 3, 5, etc. And then there are the even power functions, where y equals x to the n, and n is an even number, 2, 4, 6, etc. Let's take a look at Geometry Sketchpad to get an idea for what these functions look like. Okay, here we are in Geometer Sketchpad. We're looking at odd power functions right now. And you can see that I've got graphed y equals x, y equals x cubed, y equals x to the fifth, and y equals x to the seventh. And they're color coded so you can tell which is which. Now I can change the power of this guy and so we can look at other examples of power functions like x to the ninth or x to the eleventh, etc. Notice that they all seem to have things in common. One of them is that they all pass through the origin. They all pass through the point 1, 1. They all pass through the point negative 1, negative 1. They all have an increasing tendency. They go up from left to right. And you'll also notice that as the power goes up, as we go from x to x cubed to x to the fifth, x to the eleventh, and so on, the, the graph gets closer and closer to the x-axis between 0 and 1. It's kind of sucked down into the, into the x-axis. But as we zoom out, you can see that there's the opposite behavior. The higher the exponent is, the faster the function increases. So this, this is x to the 11th right here. This is x to the 5th, x cubed, and x. And you can see that x to the 11th increases really fast. And if I increase to even, an even higher exponent, you can see that it's faster still. Now let's take a look at even power functions. Here are the even power functions x squared, x to the 4th, x to the 6th, and x to the 8th. Like the odd power functions, they all pass through the origin. They all pass through 1, 1. But these graphs also pass through negative 1, 1. And they are not increasing functions. In fact, they're symmetric about the y-axis. Now, like the odd power functions, the higher the power is, the more the graph hugs the x-axis between 0 and 1. You can see that that's happening here with y equals x to the 8th. And if I increase the power, that's even more noticeable, x to the 10th x to the twelfth, and so on. Now let's see what happens when we zoom out. Again, like the odd power functions, the higher the power, the faster the increase when x is greater than 1. So this is x to the twelfth, this is x to the sixth, x to the fourth, and x squared. So just to a brief overview, you can see that these, this graph is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. What kind of symmetry do the odd functions have? Let's take a look back at them. These guys are symmetric about the origin. We say that they have 180 degree symmetry with respect to the origin. You can rotate them 180 degrees and you'll get the same graph. Another way that you can look at it is you can reflect them across the x-axis and then across the y-axis and you'll get the exact same graph. Okay, let's review what we've learned. So about odd functions. We've learned that, well, first of all, let's talk about the domain. You can see that these functions are going to be defined for all real numbers. There's no special reason why they wouldn't be. So the domain is going to be all real numbers, from negative infinity to infinity. Also, the graphs pass through 0, 0, and 1, 1. Graphs include 0, 0, and 1, 1. And for the moment, I'm not going to list negative 1, negative 1, because so far, what I've written also goes for even power functions. The domain is all real numbers for these guys, and they also pass through 0, 0, and 1, 1. So I'm going to focus on things, on properties that they both have. And speaking of properties that, that they both have, if you look at the right side of either kind of power function, the right side, the n goes up. The n behavior is as x goes to infinity, y goes to infinity. So let me write that down. The right end goes up. Oops. One letter ahead. End goes up. Now, properties that are specific to the odd and even ones. The odd, the odd power functions are symmetric with respect to the origin. So let me write that down. Symmetric with respect to 
whoops, respect to the origin. Okay, and that remember that kind of symmetry is where you can rotate the graph 180 degrees and you'd get the same picture. Also, the range is all real numbers. Right? You can see it looking at the graph that these are going to go up to infinity and down to negative infinity, and so you're going to hit every, every possible y value here. Now let's take a look at the even functions. Here, we have symmetry with respect to the y-axis. So symmetric with respect to, I'll abbreviate, the y-axis. And we also have, we don't have the same range here. We can't get negative numbers out of this function. When you're raising to an even power, negatives become positive. So the range only includes the non-negative numbers. You can get zero. And you can get positive numbers, but you can't get negatives. So, just to recap, all of these power functions, I'm speaking specifically about power functions where the exponent is a positive integer. All of them have a domain, all real numbers. All of them pass through the points 0, 0, and 1, 1. All of them have the property that the right end goes up. Now, if you want to know what the left end does, you look at the symmetry. When a graph is symmetric with respect to the origin, the left end goes down. The range is all real numbers. <clears throat> with even functions, they're symmetric with respect to the y-axis. So the left end does the same thing the right end does. It goes up to infinity. And the range is the set of non-negative numbers. We'll be needing to understand power functions really well when we start studying polynomial functions because it turns out that the end, <clears throat> excuse me, the end behavior of polynomial functions is, is uh, determined by the end behavior of power functions.